In September 2019, the Center for Local Prosperity gathered 21 Indigenous and faith leaders together at the Thinker's Lodge to discuss the climate crisis. Four Indigenous elders and many of the major world religions were represented. This retreat was held within a Mi'kmaq container with daily ceremony and ritual. It proved to be a powerful container and a teaching for all involved. Well, I would, uh, since, since we're in Mi'kmaq uh, homeland, I, I want to, um, I deeply appreciate the, the invite to their homeland. And it's um, a protocol that, that we live by, the uh, traditional people, when we come to, to other nations' um, homeland that we're um, first and foremost uh, to acknowledge that we're on their homeland and we thank them for in inviting us here. We're going to do four rounds before we finish the gathering over the next few days. So this is still the first round. And uh, when the stick comes to you, you speak from your heart. You don't have to speak at all. Just pass it on to the next person. Or you can hold it as long as you want and say nothing. It's whatever comes to your heart. One of the many reasons I believe we are gathered here today is because we have come to some form of realization in which something is not right. The environment doesn't, that doesn't have to be saved. It's the humanity that's got to be saved. Knowledge to me, knowledge to us is not static, it's alive physically and spiritually. Let's figure out how we can begin from a very young age and old age to teach about the importance of the connection to your earth, connecting you and the earth as one, respecting the earth. How do we teach that? How do we instill it if you don't have the language of the people who are from here? That we're here and that we want to teach those those things that we've seen, the changes and, and the mindset, how to prepare for global warming, how to prepare for things that uh, have not happened yet. And through that, I think education is such an important uh, subject. It's not all about talking. It's about listening, and that is why we are oral. We have this oral history, oral tradition. That was how we carried on for 14,000 years, carrying our songs and our traditions and what you found today, watch today, that's ancient. That has come from the traditional oral tradition. So I believe it's not too late. I believe we can take those cloaks off that we've been wearing so long and start sharing them and start listening. And once we start listening, then we also have to be con committed. There's got to be some actions coming forth from that. Faith leaders are one influential section of the population and they are readily available. They start as a grassroots level and then expand and then move into other faith communities and then, then they make a conglomeration of whatever. You know, you should, somebody has to start asking and then only anything can be sold. So I, 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 am, I, am, I don't give up. That's good. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's see what Eric has to say here. He's coming up from the. Uh, so you're coming from the uh, table. Heat, that is heat doing and this, discussion. This, uh, the treaty table. Did, Correct. Did you come up with a, a summation of that? Can you? How did it go? Just as a working. Model? It's well. We think the the peace and friendship treaties um, offer at least the right attitude of having to come together to live in in a common location. But we're not sure how we're going to uh, integrate that into the, uh, our declaration yet. The treaties are a very uh, unique uh, vehicle of, of understanding between two nations. Um, and um, we don't want to um, distort the real historical value of those, but want to say that they also do provide us with a foundation for how we live together in this specific location and how we address climate change. Now I just got to write that. While a change in climate so itself may be considered, anyway, that's too long, but yeah. the idea. Consider part of the natural world which Aboriginal peoples have inhabited for 15,000 years. The staggering losses of biodiversity and bioabundance are not. We see death and loss of life all around us. Um, yeah. Help, help track and implement these actions. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this. That sounds too... Uh, and I think the things that we're talking about around this circle um, have a lot of meaning. And I've heard people talking dinner and in this circle that uh, uh, money is actually needed to fund some of these uh, initiatives. So I'm really interested in this subject of uh, um, this exchange of meaning for money with people that have more money than meaning. And there are many initiatives around this room that have a lot of meaning and would offer a big return on investment to society altogether and to uh, the ecosystem altogether. So I would say, Elder Marshall, that the first thing we must realize is that our system cannot sustain itself. We should no longer accept it. And that the first step in action is for each and every one of us to realize that it's not about government or business to fix. If it were about government to fix, they might have done something with the Paris Accord. They might have done something with the multitude of international conferences where governments were called to stop this by a percentage point and so on. It hasn't worked and it won't work through them. Business operates with the blinders of going forward and growing and continuing and increasing profit at whatever expense and especially if they can offload those expenses to less fortunate people and less fortunate countries and areas where they can take up the pain, whereas the ones who are making the profit do not. So what Ron said this, this morning about the, um, you know, letting, letting the youth lead, I feel like there's, there's, so much, there's so much wisdom there. And in terms of our own inner teenagers, there's so much wisdom there, that passion. Um, I feel like that's truly an action uh, to, support, to support the youth. And, and uh, Ron used the expression, um, he said, to steer and guide them. They may still need to be steered and guided. And, so, this a wisdom's been around a long time, you know. Oh yeah. He was Buckminster Fuller. You remember him we, in the right oh, yeah. the hippie days? We yes. everyone gravitated. Oh, he was a really <laughs> yeah right. Fuller believed that nature is trying very hard to make a success of humanity. <laughs> well, how I can combine uh, um, indigenous beliefs and climate action? Um, uh, uh, the word beliefs, um, we don't, we don't um, gravitate towards that word. Um, our 
we call it Skijanuiba um, Mauswagan, which is how we live our life in, in a well-balanced traditional way. So um, I, I'd rather use the word spirituality. And um, when you are part of and, and have dedicated your life towards a spiritual way of life that that pretty much goes parallel with how you're connected to the earth and the water and the air and all the creation that we are connected to all living things so we can't separate ourselves we put forward gratitude towards all of life for um for mother earth uh, for her veins all the water systems for all the four legged the winged ones the uh, insects the, the flyers and, and, and the swimmers and, and all the vegetation that grows, the, um, the food and the medicine that grows, all the trees. So we know that we're, we're only a small part of all of this, uh, um, part of the universe and, and all the earth. And, and it's, it's, uh, you know, it's the job of our people to be very good stewards because in, in our creation story that we were created last and the reason why we're, we were created last is that we needed to um, know how life um, around us um, um, lived in balance and that life that was around us taught us how to live in balance. I think so many gifts in the teachings from the elders there's so much to be told and there's so much that our people could reach out and help a little bit of what's taking place in, in this, this world. And, and so what really interests me is how I can redeem for myself some of that tradition which at 58 years of age I'm not just going to throw away, right? And how I can redeem the absence of nature, like you said, you know, in, in our own learnings. And how I can harmonize what I do on Sunday morning with the love of my heart and the deep love for nature. That, those are the things I'm struggling with. It cannot mean not using that language. So I just wanted to say that. Um, as far as action goes, I want to tell you a bit about my community. I come from a very, very small community. Um, and um, I, I'm a little bit seen as the only clergy, I think, who has a fairly recognizable interest in, in, in nature and in, in the things we're wrestling with here. It leads me to think that this is really, uh, this is, these are spiritual discussions, and the juxtaposition of having our indigenous friends here with these religious leaders and how well do the choices we make reflect the justice that we truly want? Because they're both the climate problem and our oppression of indigenous peoples are in many ways about injustice and not seeing ourselves, human beings, in the humble way that we think would be organic with the earth, being one with the entire planet seeing all living creation as part of one whole, and that we are subservient to it. So what are you all working on here? <laughs> we're we're uh, working on uh, the actions in the call to action. And um, we had a lot, and we've broken them down into eight. We're working on the eighth one right now, eight specific actions that we're calling on uh, indigenous and faith-based communities and individuals to do. Um, are we limiting it to Atlantic Canada? I think we need to start. I think we need to start with something that's manageable and build on our success. If we get too big at the beginning, yeah. I'm afraid it might be too onerous, and we won't we won't make we won't have positive action. We won't move things forward. But do we need to limit it at this point, or can we just keep the wording as it is? I think I think it's just I think it's fine. 
Yeah. We're saying that's different. We're saying that um, members of religious and indigenous spiritual communities who have this particular perspective on humanity Good. Good. and what humans are for Good. have a moral responsibility. Good. When it comes to these such a huge things we are facing, like climate change, this is the responsibility of every and each one of us. Whether you have faith, or you have a, a faith-based institution, or a group, or community, or, or not, this is something that affects humanity, hum affects the entire world we live in. Because I believe we have been given love and forgiveness, which is ingrained or embedded into our hearts. And that, of course, is the unconditional love from the Creator. And that unconditional love will help me of ensuring that the words that I will extract from my heart will always be not only seen but used not only to inform but also to heal. I believe what we need, I believe we, have, we all have heard it here for the short period of time we have been here and that word is compassion and love. Love is our main source of our existence. Without love, without love, we would not be here today. We couldn't have done it without you. No, you would have been styling to death. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. This is medicine. Yeah. It's gravy, but it's um, yeah. flour and butter. Salmon broth there. Is the salmon going to go on this one then? It's a big... Then we need, yeah, the big... Yeah. So this I, thought, is, I put the vegetables over there to give this enough this space for This is salmon broth. Yeah. Okay, you have to put that. I got that. Right yeah. here. And every time we have a gathering, it's a celebration of um, new, new um, kinship, fellowship, and, and goodwill as uh, probably we done 500 years ago, 200 years ago when we gathered nations and nations and stuff like that. So anyway, go away. 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 Go we use a bit of nothing. It's why I know you. Greater, as we stand before you, we give thanks for the abundance of food that we're going to be here, the moose, the salmon, and all the, in the traditional bread, coffee, tea, and, and all this. We ask you to bless our food and that we have, as we enjoy our meal, we talk in, in good talk in good spirits, ask questions so that we could get to know stuff as we sit, enjoy our meals. With that, and I say, in sit Nigamal, it means all my relations, everybody's relations, we enjoy today's meal. Thank you. Well, oh. This is called loose skin again. It's our Nigamal bread. It's a flour-based bread. We'll fill you up, so be careful. Yeah. So moose meat is very rich. It was hunted last fall, so uh, it's a great time to ask for moose because everybody wants to get rid of it so they can fill it up again. It comes from Hunter's Mountain, Kelly's Mountain, and Cape Breton. <laughs> so we'd get these salmon, take them down to the community, 
pass them around to the elders, and then we'd, the we'd keep the one, and we'd go back to the swimming the place where we used to swim, mm -hmm. make a real good fire, Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and then dig a hole, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then put the coals in, wrap it salmon up, salmon, more coals, go swimming for 30 minutes, come back, it will just be oh, delicious. 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 The biggest thing I've learned, and some others have said in their own way in this, is that the, when we dishonored the treaties, the covenant between ourselves and indigenous Canadians, and when we dishonored the treaties and the covenant with the earth, it's the same act of dishonor. So when I listen to you talk about church and about what has been done to you as a people, I know you're also talking about what happened to the four ladies and the creatures with wings and the creatures that live under the ground. And so uh, for our friends who weren't here the whole week and for the folks from the media, what I would say is the settlers here understand more deeply the impact of our double dishonoring. And we understand that we have a responsibility to go back to the covenant, to go back to the treaties, and to live in a more honorable way. And Elder Albert Marshall has given us the teaching that if we find a way to do that, there will be healing for the earth. Lolly.